boost your shop organization, and maybe even take back some space you didn't know you had. Just a couple of short weeks ago, we did a review on this OmniWall setup behind us. And as far as metal pegboard goes, the quality of the build is second to none. I'm telling you, the fit and finish, uh, how the corners are bent, and just the whole setup is really very impressive. And also how their accessories mount to it and secure to it, not just mount to it, but secure. So they have pins that can secure everything. So you're not dealing with hooks that kind of fall off the wall. Well, we're not trying to reinvent that review. You can actually see it. We'll have a link in the description as well as it's probably floating somewhere around here. Uh, so be sure to check that one out. But we want to do something that we actually mentioned in that video, and that is what we have here wrapped in the bubble wrap as well as kind of sitting right here is we want to reclaim some space right here on the end of our pallet rack. Now, pallet racks are awesome in a shop or you see them in the Home Depots and Lowe's. Uh, they're great to be able to vertically stack things, but when it kind of ends in the shop like you see here, we also have a big steel beam right here. You've got a lot of blank space that you really can't do a lot with, but we think we've got an idea. And we didn't do any penetrations on the uprights or any, you know, weld straight to it. We actually used the bolt holes that were there to actually mount just a real quick fabricated uh, steel tube structure so that we can mount this Omni wall cabinet. Now this cabinet is not just any cabinet because it's going to utilize their pegboard system as well. Really cool idea. The only problem is we got to borrow the, uh, the panels here on behind us and we'll have one gap that we'll fill later. But anyway, so let's go ahead. We'll kind of deconstruct the wall behind us, steal two panels off of it, replace one of them and then start over here. Let's get started. Now the first thing I want to do is mount these rails and what's critical on these is number one that you get the top and the bottom correct. This is the top rail. It has this little offset here in it because that's where the lift actually lays over. And by the way, the, the actual panels do not care whether they're upside down or, or not. There, there is no upside down. Uh, but the lift of the panel on this top rail goes over the top here. So that's how you can see that this is the top rail where the bottom rail is just nice and flat through here. So first you want to make sure you get the top on the top. And then also you want to make sure this is level because you want that panel hanging level so that they stay true when they hang next to one another. Also, I'll mention that uh, these rails we took down, they were hanging on our, our other wall, and these are 32 inch rails. They're 16 inch panels, uh, but these rails are made to be as wide as the cabinet. So the cabinet's 32 inches wide, so these are one piece rails, 32 inches. And so that gives you a lot more stability uh, through the hanging and through the mounting of this. So that's why we had to pull these down and uh, reinstall 16 inch ones on the other wall. So let's go ahead and get these up. I'm not gonna cover everything. I'll kind of fast forward through here. Basically we're using some uh, self-tapping, self-drilling screws uh, to mount these in this uh, one inch steel tubing. I have a couple of holes drilled already, so I'll go ahead and just run a couple of screws in here. And by the way, it's not a bad idea to mark these out with a level first. It'll help you in that you don't have to hold it up here while you're running a screw into either lumber or steel as we're doing here. I'm gonna validate that I'm level before I carry on. Looks like it needs to go a touch higher. And that looks dead on. And this is where, once you get a couple of screws in here, uh, I would come back and make sure that your measurement's on because these things are dead on 48 inches. So make sure that from the top to uh, the top side of this, because this is gonna bear the weight. So the panel is actually gonna sit on the top 
is 48 inches. And you may even want to uh, test fit a panel, just kind of give you the kind of guarantee that, uh, that you're hitting your marks. Make sure that your holes line up and that the clips will go in. And then also down here at the bottom, make sure that your holes will line up down here at the bottom as well. You could just take the clip without the lock in it and find the hole and make sure that that goes in without any issues, without having to tweak it too much. And that's going to tell you that you should be, uh, number one, the right height as well as uh, being plumb and it's not going to hang crooked. Now you can finish putting in your rails. Now we can just mount both these panels and get the clips in them. Now, if these clips are brand new, you may want to use a little, uh, you know, soft hammer, if you will, to hammer them in, especially when you put the pins in. Uh, to, to make it easiest, if you just pull the pins out, uh, you can stick these in there and they'll go in pretty easy. And then when you put the locks in or the pins in, sometimes they're really hard to push with your finger if they're brand new. Now, once you've used them once, they tend to make, be a lot easier. But you know, a little uh, soft blow hammer will work out very well in handling that pretty easily for you. Now we've got those clips in, our seam is nice and tight here, everything's all plumb and square. Let's get the cabinet hung. So you can see we got our panels up and these are 16 inches wide each and 48 tall. Now our cabinet is going to span this entire area. It is a 16 by 48 or a 32 by 48 cabinet. So they mentioned that if you're going to install large accessories, so big shelves, uh, big uh, bottle holders, whatever, it may be easier or it will be easier to go ahead and install these now and kind of build the cabinet around it. It can be done later, but they just mentioned if you're already planning, go ahead mount your larger accessories and then build the cabinet. We're going to go ahead and just build the cabinet and the sides are going to hang first. So we're going to mount the uh, left hand side first and you'll be able to tell by the way the hooks are on here because it actually obviously is going to hang on those hooks there and it's going to go right on that outside line and you'll see that the panel is flush with the outside. You'll see what I'm talking about right here. So you can see the panel is absolutely flush with the outside of the cabinet. And the bottom should be flush with the bottom as well. Now once both sides are on, the first thing you're going to do is put in the bottom uh, shelf for the bottom of the cabinet. And the thing I really like about this is, is look at this, they, they make it really easy. You got a couple of holes here where you're gonna mount screws, but also they have these tabs that are gonna rest right there on the sides while you put those screws in. And these are just little, uh, I think 632 screws, so real small Phillips screws. And don't tighten them all the way, you just want to get them decently snug or kind of placed if you will. Kind of bring it almost all the way to. Okay, now we got the bottom one, but it's nice and loose still, still got a, a a good amount of gap that I can work with while we put the top one on. Now the top one is going to be a bit more difficult because you've kind of got to hold it in place while you put those screws in. So I went ahead and got a couple of clips. So I'll put the clips in the holes. I don't have to put the locks in them. Very impressed that even these small holes line up extremely well. I think they need to fabricate for Ikea. Okay, now all eight of those screws are started and our bottom and top and both sides are in. But you still don't want to tighten the screws yet until you get all the clips in place. And once you get the clips in, tighten your screws. And after you get the screws tightened, we want to put in these little bump stops and these go right here where the doors are going to hit and that's going to keep the doors from slamming and going uh, paint to paint or metal to metal. I'm going to take a little bit of soap and see if that helps to install these. 
you could probably get a little screwdriver under the back side, but yeah, so just a little soap on that, I was able to push that right through. Probably use glass cleaner as well. Yeah, you can literally push that in with your thumbs. The great thing about glass cleaner or soap is you can just wipe it right off when you're done. And now we're just gonna do everything for the bottom. Push our clips in. Tighten the screws. Okay, now all the sides and the top and the bottom and all the clips and the screws and the bump stops are in. It's time to put on the doors. Now this makes it rather easy because this is just your uh, typical, not your typical, but your higher end cabinet hardware uses the same stuff. So you may see this in uh, your kitchen and it's a two piece design. So we can mount this to the actual cabinet body and we can mount this to the actual doors so we don't have to hold the doors in place while we hang these and what happens here these two pins right here kind of slide into place right there and then you'll see a clip right there so now that's locked into place but just push this lever and then you can pry that away and now they're two separate pieces again so this will mount on the cabinet and this little depression right here that this tongue that depresses will face the back of the cabinet and the screws are included with these. Now we're gonna install the hinges on the doors. It's kinda of hard to put these in wrong because they are offset. In fact, it's probably impossible. And now we'll try to line those pins up. And there we go. So now it holds open and it holds closed. And then just rinse and repeat with the other one. And there you have it. It's installed the full 32 inch wide by 48 inch tall cabinet with the pegboard on the inside. I love the fact that we have pegboard on the inside of the door. We also have the pegboard on the back wall that we can hang on any of that. We have a nice solid bottom as well. Also like the rubber bump stops and the lockable doors. But again, I really like the fact that we can hang things here on the doors, not just the walls. We can put shelves in there, uh, many different accessories that they offer. And we'll definitely be outfitting this um, for some specialty tools. I did want to mention something that I think is really cool. And really this uh, is another testimony to OmniWall and their fabrication um, I guess fabrication skills, uh, but more so just thinking ahead because here is a full size width, you know, bottle holder, spray bottle holder, whatever you want to call it, aerosol can holder, and it will still fit in here. You're not limited to having smaller accessories. And here's a 32 inch. So here's a full dual span. This fits across two of the OmniWall panels and it will still go in here. Now, I think that's what they're talking about when we initially put it together it would was that maybe you want to put these in here beforehand but really and truly they've built this in a way that these panel these outside uh, cabinet walls do not get in the way of even installing these full 32 inch wide um, accessories we're extremely happy with how all this turned out both the wall behind me as well as the omni wall cabinet the cabinet is built just like the panels, uh, very, very precise. Everything lines up, even down to the little uh, 632 screws lined right up, no hassles whatsoever. Um, everything is nice and flush on the edges. And the fact that you could still install all the sh shelving on the inside, even though some of those are full span. So they've done a great job at, again, thinking ahead to make sure that all that's going to line up as well as fit. 
we like how that we were able to take a space on the end of our pallet rack and be able to now utilize that to put in, uh, and these are lockable cabinets now, so we can put in, you know, maybe expensive items, maybe uh, expensive bits, blades, uh, polishers, you name it, whatever we need to, we can put in there. And we're definitely going to accessorize it with some of the different accessories from OmniWall. Now, I will tell you one small concern, small uh, question I have, and we're going to ask OmniWall, is there an option where you don't have to have a lockable cabinet? Because right now, if the key's in it, you can't pull the key out. Um, and so that's obviously due to the lock style. Uh, but so if you want the cabinets unlocked, then you have to leave the keys in it. Otherwise, you can't pull them out. So I can't leave them in an unlocked position. So I have to close it up and lock it, and then I can pull the keys out. Again, if you're wanting to keep things secure, then that's the way you want it. But it'd be nice if they do have an option to be able to leave those unlocked, maybe just have a knob or something where you can uh, unlock those. But I do like the locking system as well. It's not just locking the two doors together. It's actually a pin on the bottom and the top that's securing into the cabinet and not just locking to one another or not just a small lip here where it's locking to. So nice secure locking system. Uh, and I love the fact that we have now the pegboard here on the doors where we can hang things. We got the pegboard on the back. Again, we can accessorize this, put shelving in it, uh, put different uh, you know, hangers of any sort in there. So really looking forward to accessorizing this whole thing. This is a 12 inch deep cabinet and 32 inches wide. 48 inches tall and built very, very solid. So again, very happy with the Omni wall cabinet and the Omni wall system as a whole. So be sure to check it out. We'll have a link to this cabinet uh, in our description, maybe a link to a few other things as well. So be sure to check them out. Also keep track of us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and even TikTok. And if you don't mind, would you hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't done so already? And by all means, if you hated our video, well, give us a thumbs down. But would you let us know in the comments why? Have a great day and keep smiling.